Tonight we're talking about iPro, Hunter's HD Gold Shooting Glasses. Are you ready? Stand by. <laughs> Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and I'll be your guide in pursuit of practical pistol proficiency. So today we're talking about the ugliest glasses you will spend the most money on, yet all of the cool kids at the range will likely be wearing some as well. These are the Hunter's HD Gold Eye Pro. Now I'm just going to be summarizing a lot of stuff about these particular glasses and why they command such a premium and why they're so desirable among the practical shooting community but I do have a link in the description to a podcast where Brian over at Hunter's HD Gold actually says in his own words the history of the HD Gold glasses and why they work the way that they do. So I ran into Brian Connolly of Hunter's HD Gold at USPSA Factory Gun Nationals and he was gracious enough to offer up a pair to give away. It's the very same pair that I compete with, the Gage Black Crystal frames with the Hunter's HD Gold lenses. Now that's a $300 or $370 value and I'm going to tell you how you can win that but you have to stay to the end of the video. I'll see you then. To disclose any relationship with the vendor, I actually won these off a prize table at the Double Tap Championship this year. So I got these for free. They were not sent to me. So I can say whatever I want but it's going to be mostly good stuff anyway. So why are they called Hunter's HD Gold if you use them for practical shooting? They were initially developed for hunters. The yellow sort of lens to it allows there to be what they say 30 more minutes of usable daylight if you're going out on hunts and things like that. I don't know that I would go so far as to say that it provided 30 minutes extra of daylight because getting to the range before the sun is up, I can't see necessarily well enough to shoot any sooner than I could if I wasn't wearing the glasses, but it does make things more obvious in the dark, uh, although I wouldn't necessarily call it usable when you're shooting. But that is really kind of secondary or even tertiary as far as why competitive shooters like these glasses. First and foremost, they are photochromatic. And what that means is they actually get darker as they're exposed to ultraviolet radiation. So they act almost like sunglasses, although they don't knock the glare down to the point where a traditional set of sunglasses couldn't do it better, but they do manage the amount of light that hits your eye so that there never is so much glare like you feel like you need to squint. But at the same time, if you go from very bright into a shaded area, like under a safe area at the back of the range or whatever it is, it won't be like immediately like having to take your glasses off because you can't see anything because the yellow lens actually does let enough light in that you can see in low light and you can see in bright light. So it is a pretty well suited tint. But probably the biggest and most important thing about as to why people like these is they say that it provides more contrast and makes things appear almost like they're more 3D. Another reason they're popular among competition shooters is they're manufactured out of Trivex, which is a type of plastic. It's probably not a plastic, don't kill me. But it was developed to be used as vision armor, so it is very, very hard. And to that point, these are actually built to the ANSI Z87-2 specification. So there's that. It will stop a quarter inch ball bearing going 150 feet per second, which is about as good as you can get out of a frame style of glasses without being like goggles. So they are very robust and provide good protection for your eye, as good as anything else on the market. And the yellow lenses in the glasses really allow you to connect with your inner Walter Soap Checker, potentially Hunter S. Thompson. Market zero! Walter. <laughs> Market zero! And the price on these suckers is pretty stout. They're about $369. And that is also going to cover a prescription pair as well, which is actually a pretty good price for prescription shooting glasses. But just the base model for no prescription is still going to be that $370. So do the glasses actually work and are they worth it? The value thing is going to be subjective, but increasingly as I've continued to use them and get used to them, I find myself preferring them over my old shooting glasses, which are Rudy Project Rhydons, which are very nice glasses. What the Hunters HD do that the Rudys don't necessarily is they provide more contrast. Everything seems more 3D. So if you're looking at a brown target with a brown berm behind it, it makes the target actually stand out more. And so you have a better spatial awareness of where the target is. And it's like that with everything. 
Further, the yellow tint to the glasses is nice, honestly. It uh, makes things that are illuminated like red dots appear very vividly. And like driving through the parking deck at my office, uh, the instrument cluster on my dashboard just glows very brightly when I'm actually wearing these glasses. Are the transition lenses a big deal? Yeah, I'd go so far as to say that's a kind of a nice thing to have because when you put the glasses on at the start of the day and it's kind of dark, and then, you know, midday, it's super duper bright. You don't really notice a difference. It does do a pretty good job regulating the amount of light that makes it to your eyes. So it is kind of nice. Whereas with the ride on glasses, sometimes I would start with like the yellow lenses in because lighting wasn't great in the morning. And then midday where the sun came out, having to switch to the brown uh, lenses. I don't remember what they're called. And then in the evening, if it ran long, maybe switching back to the yellows because the light wasn't quite as good. And I'm not alone in doing that. I've seen other people who have iPro with the interchangeable lenses switch the lenses throughout the day. So it does eliminate that if you're in that camp. And as far as the impact resistance, yeah, I'm not testing that guys. I like the glasses too much to shoot a ball bearing at them at 150 feet per second. So I'm just gonna take their word for it that they're gonna stop that ball bearing. Now this frame is actually called the gauge black crystal. And what that means is that the arms on the thing are black and the front is this kind of clear crystal color. Yeah, they, these things come in different sizes. And another thing I really like about them is I've got a pretty darn big head. These fit my head very, very well. I would love to tell you what I don't like about the glasses because this would not be a humble marksman review if I didn't at least cry about something. And there is a little to cry about with these despite my overwhelmingly positive feeling on them. But first we have to understand the relationship between content creator and you, the subscriber. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so and hit the like button while you're in the area. So I make world-class firearms content. You watch this content. Then you consider your neighbor's cat or dog that they're never keeping an eye on that wanders around the neighborhood. You think it might be funny to get them to get it under control by maybe using some humane type dye on the animal, giving it a good meal, and then setting it loose in the neighborhood. So you use that dye and put my logo on the side of your neighbor's fat cat that's always outside and set it loose on the neighborhood. So everyone in the neighborhood will know of the world-class firearms content here on the channel. But if you're not that committed, I certainly understand. It's all about the likes as far as the algorithm is concerned. Let YouTube's algorithm know that I'm delivering you world-class firearms content. If you'd like to take this a step further, maybe check out some of the links in the description, specifically my Patreon page where one buck a month will get you access to three to five blog posts a week and likely help you become a better shooter as a result because that's where my performance diary is. But if all that's a little too rich for your blood, again, I'll settle for a like. With that said, some things that I don't like about the glasses. Number one, they look goofy. There's really kind of no way around that. They're just gonna look goofy, but they work so well, I'm willing to absorb the goofiness. Number two, the gauge frames. The gauge frames are not the best for driving. Because of the typical wraparound style glass, it kind of blocks your peripheral vision right there. So when you're checking your blind spot, you have to kind of turn your head a bit more. Uh, whereas a traditional like non wraparound glasses, you could just kind of peek out the side of the lens. Not a huge deal, but just something worth noting. And the cost, honestly, 370 bucks is a lot, a lot of money. And I know how it is when you've got all this stuff that you want to buy for your shooting hobby, like iPro is pretty far down on the list, but with the iPro and the HD nature of how it works and creates more contrast, I, I can't oversell how good that is. It allows you to see the edges of the target and for some reason it makes it easier to aim onto the center of the target. I can't quantify that in time, but if you AB it with any other shooting glass, I can tell you I would probably prefer the Hunter's HD and how it makes the target stand out from the berm. And when you first put the glasses on, you're gonna see everything is like super duper yellow, but immediately you'll see what I mean with the more high def edges of targets and things in space. So would I recommend that you buy these? You saw me guys, if you follow the channel, I used to wear glasses pretty much exclusively. I dusted off the old contacts and then back in the contacts game, purely so I can shoot in these glasses because I think they're that good. So when I first wrote the script a couple few weeks ago, I was gonna say maybe they're worth the asking price, but I've continued to shoot, shot another major with them. 
I would say they're definitely worth the asking price. Whether or not it makes sense for you to prioritize that in your spend on your shooting hobby, I can't help you, but I do know there's no ammo on the shelf, so it's not like we're out buying ammo right now. So now might be a decent time to get into a pair of these if you've been curious. And Brian is a great guy. He supports the shooting sports. He's in a major match like every weekend of the year. He streams stuff to uh, Instagram and his social media so you can see some of the big names tearing it up at major matches that he's at. So that's pretty cool. So we tend to support our own if you're into the competitive shooting sports and that's reason enough for me to want to support them as well. All right, so giveaway time. This video is going to run for a two week period from the day this video is published and that's going to put us at the Friday after Thanksgiving, the 27th of November, 2020. There's no purchase required or any of that other legal disclaimer stuff. The rules are very, very simple. Number one, you have to like the video. Number two, you have to be subscribed to my channel. And number three, you have to subscribe to the Hunters HD Gold YouTube channel, which I'll put a link in the description and at the closing screen of the video. On the 27th, I am going to go live and use a random comment picker to pick the winner of the glasses. I will reply to your comments, so be sure to follow up on that notification. And I'll also post on my Instagram who the winner is, where you can get in touch with me and we can work out shipment. So again, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and subscribe to the Hunters HD Gold channel, and you will be entered automatically in a giveaway that concludes on the 27th of November. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, guys.